Ian, firstly, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Can you start by telling us a little bit about your book and what inspired you to write it? Um, well, we'll start with Steve Davey, who'd come up to... Um, he just wanted to do a little interview, a little clip for the um, programme. So I, I sat down, told him a couple of stories, and then he asked me about a few things more. And then it just carried on and carried on, and I was just doing story after story. He said, you should write a book. I went, oh, I might think about that. And then it took me a couple of months, and then I rang him up and said, come on, let's go and do it. And then that's where we are now. Were there any specific themes or messages you wanted to convey to the readers of your book? Um, not really. It's, it's just about um, me trying to make it as a footballer, going through the ins and outs, getting released, and then finding another club, and then finally finding the place where I loved, and everything seemed to click for me at Tranmere. Looking back at your time at the club, what are the standout moments or memories that come to mind? <laughs> what, in the dressing room or on the pitch? Whichever you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> well, mainly on the pitch. Uh, just some great fun. Um, we all worked hard together, all good professionals. We all liked to drink in those days. And uh, it seemed to rub off on us and great camaraderie, team spirit. And we all fought for each other and we're like brothers on the pitch and off it. And that made a hell of a difference. So talking of that, was there anyone at the club that inspired you and helped you through your career? Um, I wouldn't say at this club because I'd already been to other, other teams before I arrived here. Frank Worthington was a massive influence on me and uh, also I played under Terry Venables who was the best manager I ever played for. So I'd already had that um, intuition from, from the, other, the other managers and once I came here I was under Frank and Frank obviously looked after me and then Johnny King came and everything changed. Every player faces their, their challenges during their career. What are some of the most significant challenges you encountered and how did you overcome them? Well, the, the massive one was i will just get back up and keep fighting. Once I was released from um, QPR and then I, I went to Birmingham City, they released from there, then gone to Brighton. you just got to carry on. If you believe in yourself and keep fighting, you'll get where you want to get. It took me a long time. And then once I got to... Tranmere, things turned round for me and look where I am now. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you can say that again. On the flip side, what were the greatest triumphs or successes you experienced whilst playing for Tranmere? Well, obviously the, the cup finals, the promotions, um, winning games where we, we shouldn't have won, winning games when we were down to nine men against ten men, just simple things like that. They're, they're all great achievements. But obviously the, the main ones come out are the ones that, that get your promotion or, or win you a cup. So beyond the matches, the club is known for its community spirit and having a brilliant fan base. What are some of the off-the-pitch stories or moments you think that define your time at Tramway Rovers? Oh, everywhere I went. Everywhere. Just go to different places, walk into a pub, hello Ian, sit down, wouldn't bother me. And 100% the club's a family club because I knew all the staff from the bottom all the way through and all the players stuck together and, and the, the best thing was I, I just walked in here today and the lad that used to work on the door is still here and I remembered him and he remembered me and that's just magical. So looking back you scored over 180 goals in your Tramia career making you still to this day the top goal scorer for the club. We of course now have the lounge named after yourself. How does it feel knowing you leave such a legacy at the club? <laughs> well, it brings tears to your eyes sometimes. I mean, I've filled up a couple of times today, uh, but it, it has been magical just to come back and see your name on there. And uh, there's about 14 of my friends have come here and they just can't believe it. They're just overwhelmed. A um, couple of all my brothers here, he's cried. And uh, my friend as well, he said, you're the only man that's ever brought tears to my eyes. I said, I've never done anything. But it's just magical. What advice would you give to young aspiring footballers who dream of having a su successful career like yourself? Dream. There's players, um, been great, good footballers that haven't made it. And that's because probably, I'm only talking from my experience, where... I struggled at a club, moved on to another club, then went on to it, but I just didn't quit. 
and that's in my book. There's a poem in there called Don't Quit. And it's a fantastic poem. And all you have to do is read that or just keep going if you're a youngster. Uh, you never know what's around the corner. You might be struggling for, what, for six months and then all of a sudden you hit a load of form and it can take you to the sky. So now that your book is out, do you have any future plans related to football or Tramia Rovers? Not at the moment, no. Uh, I just do what I do. Um, I enjoy coming back here. Hopefully I'll be back again. The sooner the better. Uh, with better conditions. <laughs> Every time I come here, it seems to rain. Must be me. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very Thank much. You. I really so enjoyed that. Really